Last month when I was babysitting my nephews, um, the oldest one, Ollie, Hello, Oliver. pulled out a box of chamois paints. And being the person that I am, my interests were per. To my surprise, I found that that is the student grade watercolors to the Shinhan paints. Well, I mean, I didn't necessarily find it since a kid shoved it in my face. <laughs> So, with my sister-in-law and my nephew's permission, since they belong to him, I asked if I could have some to play with, which bring us to here. I know these paints belong to a five-year-old, but boy, it sort of really irked me how bad of a state the paints were in, and I'm a messy person too, so that's saying something. It's pretty bad. At least now I know why my sister-in-law hid them in such a high place out of his reach. Okay, so I wasn't sure if I should have included the pink pouring stage or not, but I decided to leave it in because uh, when I poured the yellow ochre, it came out like a new gamboge color, very warm yellow orangey color. Um, but when I mixed it with the binder, it sort of darkened and became a raw sienna color. It, it was really strange, so I wanted to keep that in there to show what it's like being poured. And I'm not going to talk in too much details about the paint themselves in this video because I have a part 2 coming up comparing the Shami and Shinhan paints where I talk in a more, I guess, technical way. Um, so let's bring the attention back to my 5 year old nephew, Ollie. Honestly, I swear he's so artistic, it makes me kind of jealous sometimes. <laughs> I found some of his old artwork that he did himself with zero guidance from me in my studio and um, in this one he drew his pet fish. I don't remember their names. Hold on. Ollie, what's your fish names? There's one called Nemo and one called Marlin and there's one long one, I don't know what it's called, and there's Melanaris and there's Krobus. Yeah, uh, his pet fish that he painted on his souvenir foam gaining his green belt in Taekwondo. And this is his sketchbook, which I stapled some printer paper together. Look at that dragon and these bats. It's, it's just astounding that a five-year-old did these. Alright, so let's get Oli to break into these newly dry shammy paints. What can I draw? Who's a pen? I need a pen. A pen? Yeah. So let's start with this. Do you know blueberry is the king of every fruit? That's why it's got a crown. Ali, do you want to tell everyone what you drew? Uh, a monster eating fruits. Well, why is the monster eating fruit? Because uh, lots of children didn't eat it, they put it in the rubbish. I swear, kids come up with the most creative ideas. I sure as heck would have never thought of his concept, let alone draw it. So, <laughs> see if Auntie can recreate this painting. Um, <laughs> I did this when Ollie went back to his home so I could surprise him in the morning. Unfortunately, his response to it wasn't really amazing. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he was too shocked. <laughs> So I accidentally gave Ollie the better paper that's meant for watercolors and I painted on the thick sketch book paper since I had both of them pre-cut out at the same dimension and I marked the wrong paper. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it still held up well uh, but the paint acted stiffer on it. Um, yeah. I wanted the line work to be soft, so I picked up a rainbow coloring pencil, however, I ended up relining everything later with a reddish brown ink that's in my fountain pen, since the pencil disappeared under all the um, layers of watercolors. I do want to retry the rainbow color pencil line work in the future, so maybe it might come out better on something else, but I'll have to experiment with it to see if I can use it more effectively. Look how pretty it is without the paint. <laughs> I admit, drawing monsters was definitely outside my comfort zone. Almost everything I've ever made is, well, cutesy. So, uh, gosh, I had, I really had no idea where to start. There were two plant monsters that I know of that I drew inspiration from, and that is the plant from the Little Shop of Horrors and the Piranha Plant from the Super Mario series on Nintendo. So, the only comfortable thing I had to work with is the use of desaturated colors. 
I really love muddy colors. <laughs> Most of the produce thrown in the bin are intact and looks fine from the top left corner and that's where the zombie cannibal plant is catching them all. And on the bottom left, that's where the leftover waste of the digested fruits and vegetables are because I guess zombie plants are civilized too. <laughs> Ali, what color are the stinkrays? A bit red green. Okay. At this point, I thought I was done since Ollie didn't do a background and I thought I would recreate this drawing to exact or at least with all of the elements in it. But I felt it was a little bit unfinished to me. I really liked the direction that it was heading, so I continued to push it a little bit further, which is a good decision. And since the zombie plant is already so detailed, the background should be a little bit more plain, but I couldn't figure out what color I should use for it. Then I remembered the color mine generator that I use for the Art Room Discord monthly challenge. And ta-da! Purple it is, and it did make sense with all the greens, blues, and yellows that I already used. It was actually painting the background where I realized that this paper is sketchbook paper and watercolor paper. <laughs> It looks horrible here with all the splotchiness, but it actually mellows out later. Not sure why or how, because I did nothing to fix the splotchiness since the paper was starting to break down from all the water usage, but it just fixed itself. I do think the con of the Xiaomi paints is the lack of ultramarine blue. I couldn't mix a pretty subtle grey neutral that I normally use, instead I had a dark cool black to work with and I wasn't used to something so dark or shading. But you know, ultramarine is usually the warm blue of every set so it's kind of weird how it wasn't in this one. It worked in the end so I'm not complaining, at least not too much. <laughs> Um, with that, I added some texture with coloring pencils, some highlights, and bam, done. This is Ollie's reaction to the painting. It's sort of underwhelming, <laughs> but I think it was more because he was shocked. And, and what do you think of Auntie's drawing? That is good. What is that all? That is Flies scary a little bit. Scary? Just a little bit. <laughs> Not that scary. I think it would be very cute to show Ollie this video when he's a little bit older and understand what's happening. I want to see his reaction then. <laughs> Not to my drawing, but to his overall art process. So who knows, maybe we might do one with his other brothers too in the future. Is the creative aunt? I hope so. <laughs> the version that I have right now in my hand is the self-healed one, which I've scanned. I swear, the colors just somehow melded with the paper eventually or something. It's really weird. So I hope you enjoyed this collab or redraw with Ollie and I using his art supply. Is there anything you want to say, Ollie? Oh, he's too shy to say anything right now. <laughs> so thank you for watching. Happy painting and bye.